Hello world, welcome back to Rock Hard Caucus. This is the only podcast that has ever or will ever be recorded in the state of Iowa. My name is Justin <laughs> Comer. I'm joined by uh, regular Rock Hard Caucus contributors Natalie and Cooper Harwood. Say hey. hello to the people. Hello. And we're joined by two very special guests today. We've got Chris and Shane from the Eat the Rich podcast. Howdy, folks. How you doing? Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, so, Natalie, I know you have listened to a lot of Eat the Rich. So do you want to give our listeners just a brief uh, rundown of what they're about? Yes, I'm a patron. I love it so much. You should listen to it. It's like, oh, the, yeah. oh my God, I'm so Thank obsessed you. with it and like really excited. And um, it's like very, very embarrassing how nervous i've been about this all week and watched a bunch of like monsanto <laughs> shit like <laughs> completely completely normal um <laughs> but i'm really excited so the conceit of their show is um every week they talk about either like a different multinational corporation or um billionaire or billionaire family and like go through all the like fucking freaks like just like the bizarre shit that people who are too rich will do like when they get fucking brain worms and like <laughs> so, so it's just like um goes family by family and they start with like the Waltons and kind of move on from there so it's a really good show it's one of those ones that's really fun to like even just jump around like you can just grab whatever topic sounds interesting um you should definitely listen to it um and they do have a Patreon now so subscribe to nice. that as well and a lot more people listen to their show than ours, so I'm very so, grateful that they so joined us today. So many more people. <laughs> uh, thank you for such a nice introduction. That's a much tighter explanation of the show than I can ever muster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like you, you remembered to plug the Patreon, which is something we never do. <laughs> we always forget that. <laughs> I feel like the one time we ever remembered to plug it was like on a Patreon episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I swear you talked about it more before you had one. You would joke about <laughs> your your upcoming Patreon, yeah. and then yeah, you yeah, finally yeah. got it, and then forgot it existed. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You do never mention it. <laughs> there is a Patreon. They have good stuff on there. Some of it seems like more topical, littler things that can happen kind of faster than the big episodes. So, also, we are on Patreon, um, and we make twelve dollars. <laughs> No, $12. we make like $35. $3. We make like 35 <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I never say the email. That's the thing I always forget to do for ours. It's rockhardcockers at gmail. Please send us hate mail. Do you actually check the email inbox? Oh, we, should, yeah. we should do that. No, no, we just, no, should. no I, I, get, I, get no. Hate, I get enough hate mail as it is. Do not <laughs> give out the podcast secret email, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we, we could set up another one, you know what I'm saying? But I, I don't know. If, I don't know if that's something I actually want to do. I get enough. Um, <laughs> I don't need bizarre DMs as it is. I can't. I can't imagine what your fucking inbox looks like, Chris. Like from what I see in public, I assume the private shit is just too it's wild. Weird. It's, it's weird. There's some weirdos out there, man. <laughs> you have like my favorite Twitter just situation of all time like just constantly getting like having to start new ones and getting in fights with like <laughs> shitty <laughs> shitty fucking comedians and like <laughs> getting shut down by starbucks <laughs> like <laughs> oh that's right that was you yeah oh, I forgot that. there are so many capers <laughs> i forgot the starbucks <laughs> Okay, so how is everything going on the East Coast? Everything seems super great. Like, everything's going really well over there. So, <laughs> how is your coronavirus? Well, Shane might have already had it. I'm, I'm yeah. Not, I'm not sure. He may have been one of the, uh, one of the early uh, yeah. survivors. Yeah. Weren't you guys, like, really, really sick? Yeah, for about, like, two weeks. And it was... Um... Uh, like at the very beginning of March, um, me and Carrie both started to feel really sick and, uh, slightly embarrassed to admit this, but you know, we, we live in Philadelphia, but I'm originally from New York and it was like the weekend of my birthday and we had been planning this for like a couple months. We had a bunch of people from a whole bunch of, you know, different social circles and you know how hard it is con 
to sometimes corral those people. And it was my 30th birthday and, um, you know, she especially wanted to do something really nice for that. And so we had this trip planned in New York and we ended up going through with it. But that was like the weekend where we started to feel really sick. Oh, my God, you're patient zero. You're patient zero. <laughs> And so, you know, of course we went, you know, we took like Amtrak and then we took like Subway. We went to like, you know, a hotel. We went to like all around. We went to a Broadway show. <laughs> we had all this shit planned. Hadn't Carrie also been traveling like right before that? Um, oh, yeah, yeah. To like yeah, Nevada. Yeah. She had just come back from Nevada a couple of weeks um, prior to that. <laughs> so, you know, it was weird though, because when we got back, I think it was like, because it was still at the at the front end of this thing before really the case numbers and the um you know the death toll and stuff started to rise i at a certain point i got really concerned because I, w- I was starting to feel a little bit better but she still had a pr- really persistent cough and i you know it was when i started really taking the pandemic stuff seriously and looking into like what the symptoms were and all of our stuff lined up with that like the timeline of it the exact like you know physical effects and everything and so i called around a couple of different places because I figured, you know, we should probably get tested. And I was just told, like, first of all, there are no tests. And second of all, if you come anywhere and you are sick, you're just going to get other people sick. So it was a very comforting thing from, you know, (laughs) the the state to be told, like, yeah, you might have it, but, you know, (laughs) die alone. (laughs) Nothing you can do. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So that was was very... um, yeah, that was very comforting and nice to know. But you made it through, so that's good. Yeah, no, I'm fine. So now, of course, I have the total hubris and delusion that I'll never die. Right. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> so. well, I, on the other hand, I'm like, I'm quite confident that I'm going to get it any day now and that I am. Yeah, die. yeah. Yeah. I'm, actually, I'm, I'm pretty surprised. I kind of thought that I would have it by now. <laughs> You sound disappointed that you don't. <laughs> oh, it's not. It's not so much that. It's just that, like you know, I mean, obviously, this is you know the, the you know the largest concentration, the largest breakout in the country is in you know the New York, the New York City, um, you know, Long Island, you know, the New York metropolitan area, and um, you know, I mean, my living situation is uh, you know I, I have several roommates, um, you know, any any degree of um, sort of real, it's impossible for me to do any sort of like real social distancing Mm -hmm. and um yeah i mean it's kind of you know i mean it's all over the place up here it's weird it's spooky i mean i don't know how it is in iowa i don't know what part of iowa you guys are in but i mean you know it's it's you know i I live in uh amityville i live in like a kind of a little town and uh like right we got like a little downtown area i mean it's just a ghost town i mean everything's closed you know there's um very few cars on the street you know i walk over to the gas station to um you know, pick up jewel pods and snacks and a sandwich and stuff. And, you know, everybody, I mean, everybody's wearing masks. It's weird. It's, it's, it's pretty, uh, it, it's pretty spooky, but um, it's scary. I mean, you know, I, I thought I really, you know, I thought I'd have it by now. And, um, you know, I'm, and just like I said, like with my living situation, I feel like once one of these guys gets it, which is almost inevitable, we're all just going to get it at once, which I like, I'm not looking forward to that. Um, what that situation is going to look like more than more than anything else though i'm concerned about my parents yeah my parents live in virginia you know they live in um you know i mean obviously the, the virus is everywhere um you know they're part of virginia i think a little bit less so um they do live in the you know they don't live in a rural area but they, they don't live in a city you know they live in kind of uh, um you know the like the outermost like the very outermost suburbs of Richmond before you get to um, something more rural looking. Um, so, mm-hmm. you know, I have a degree of comfort in that, but um, no, I worry about them. They're, you know, they're quite a bit older, especially my dad. My dad had me very old. Um, so he's, you know, very old. Same. Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly. Yeah. I knew that. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's frightening, you know, and, and they do, you know, they do a pretty good job of um, luckily, unlike some boomers, they, they took it seriously from the start. And, um, oh, nice! Yeah, yeah they, they've done a good job of staying inside. But you know, I mean, you got to go to the grocery store. You know, mm-hmm. and my, you know, my dad has, um, you know, my dad has several, um, you know, pre-existing uh, medical conditions, ongoing medical issues that require, you know, um, somewhat regular trips to doctors' offices and stuff. So, which that's that's you know, sort of the biggest concern for me. So yeah, so I mean, it's you know, it's nerve-wracking. It sucks. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. It's, 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 I want it to be over. You know, who knows how long this shit's going to last? You know, I, I don't know. I don't know. Shane's Shane's story was, was funny and had everybody rolling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm my input is a bummer. But I mean, yeah, I mean, it just it looks like this is just something we're going to be dealing with for a while. You know, I mean, it's just like a long time. until they have like, you know, a widespread vaccine available for it. You know, as long as somebody anywhere in the world fucking has it, there is the potential for it to flare up again. You know, so like, mm. right. I don't know how they can think that they're going to reopen everything anytime soon, because if they do, it's just going to fucking flare up again. And we're probably going to like go back and forth in and out of these cycles of like social distancing and to like reopening a little bit to back to social distancing. Like this is probably going to go on for fucking like, God, who knows, 18 months, two years. I, I don't know. I'm no expert, but I don't see, I don't see how it's not. <laughs> yeah. That's what I've been saying. Well, in Iowa, we own the fucking libs by doing nothing. <laughs> So oh, yeah. we had listen. Our governor declared a day of prayer. Now <laughs> 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 show the goddamn virus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Last Thursday it was the day of prayer. So instead of like declaring a shelter in place, she says that like this is about. It's kind of like when Michael Scott goes out and yells, "I declare break- bankruptcy." <laughs> like she's just like she's like I told everyone to stay home, and it's basically the same. Now we're gonna have a day of prayer on. <laughs> <laughs> for everyone to get together and pray that the virus doesn't come. And on our last episode, um, I went, so our state government or the governor specifically has sort of metrics that a, a certain region of our state has to reach before she will declare a shelter in place. And there's like a point system. And the initial idea was that if any of these regions hit 10 points, then she will issue a shelter in place order. And this week, one of the regions uh, hit 10 points, and we still have nothing. So it's, I don't know. I likened it to a game of chicken. Like, there's five states <laughs> left with no shelter <laughs> in place, and it looks like we might win, because even if when we are, even when we reach the uh, the metrics that we said we would need to reach to issue a shelter in place, we still didn't do it. So it's just not going to happen. No, we're going to pray. We're going to pray here. <laughs> I was a cool state. We got Steve King. We got Day of Prayer for... <laughs> Hold on to be number one. Here yeah, they just um I, I believe it's statewide. I believe it was Cuomo that, that did it. They just um you know, as a, as of today, um I believe that you know, I don't know how to what degree they're going to enforce this, but like to, to go out in public at all or to go into any kind of business you're supposed to you know, you're required to have a mask on, supposedly some kind of face covering. Oh yeah, yeah. But uh, no, I, I um just about a month ago or several weeks ago, like right, right as, right as this thing started getting serious and right as like, you know, the social, social distancing started becoming a thing people were talking about, I decided to um, get back on Facebook and I haven't been on Facebook in, you know, many, many years. Tell them why. <laughs> <laughs> oh, which, um, oh, well, God, that's a, that's a long story. <laughs> Okay, I'll keep it short. So no, I got, I got, I got, I got banned from. Well, this so the, the account I'm on now. I got, the account I'm on now is one that I had like I've had for like ten years. So, like I, I got locked out of it, you know, several years back, and so I started another account, um, you know, instead. And so like I was using this other account, and I was using it primarily to um, to troll. It's like I found all these like awful um, right wing Facebook groups. One of them was called like. Barack Obama, for the sake of our country, go back to Kenya. <laughs> and like one of them was called like, uh, you know, heritage, not hate, Southern pride, oh, yeah, and, you know, stuff best. like that. Yeah. But, like, what's the one you were obsessed with, Cooper? Oh, I spent a lot of time on uh, prepare to take America back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, no, so, so I, I, I was doing a lot, you know, I, I'm not sure what exactly it was that got me banned because I had a couple different things going on. <laughs> all the time. One of them, one of them was, um, first of all, that, that, that Obama Kenya group and then the, um, the Heritage Not Hate one. Like, they both had like absentee admins for the groups. Like there's, all, there's probably like 900 to 1200, um, you know, people in each of those groups. They were fairly decent sized, active enough, but like, you know, they probably never had any issues until I joined them. So they never, like, <laughs> you know, I guess they had admins that like didn't really do anything or weren't really active on there. So I just like, I, 
I realized that, and then I just you like went buck wild. <laughs> well, yeah, and I just told them I was the admin. <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm sorry. This group is now dedicated to to Hillary Clinton appreciation. <laughs> And they're, like, they're like, fuck you, fuck you, asshole, you know, and I was like, hey, look, like, if you can't follow the rules of the group, I'm going to have to remove you. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so I, was, so I was doing that, but around the same time I was doing that was also, I found these other, this collection of really good groups. Do, do you remember the Antifa, like Civil War or whatever, back in mm-hmm. 2017, that like the, oh, yeah. that the right was hyperventil- hyperventilating yeah. about. Like, so the, the November 4th thing. So like I found all these um, groups. I mean, they were really going nuts about that. Like I found all these groups and like a lot of them had like, I mean, thousands and thousands and thousands of members, you know, and they were all named like Patriots Against Antifa and like stuff like that. And like the anti-Antifa group, you know, and uh, they really believed it was a thing. It's so fucking funny. They really did. They really did. And like, what was going on in most of these groups? It was um, this sort of like particular thing. This this thing that the right has, where they like to uh, fantasize about being able to justifiably murder somebody. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And so, like, all of these groups were just like, I, you know, I, I can't wait till some. Anti for pussy, you know. I hope they come to my house, you know. Yeah, you know, and like, and uh, and so they were all like, the groups were mostly dedicated to like people like posting pictures of their guns and like showing off like their arsenal and stuff. And like, you know, what's the best, um, you know, what's the best gun to defend against these guys? Blah blah blah. And someone's like, oh yeah, you could use birdshot against them, you know, implying that they're weak or something. <laughs> Oh, they're weak, but then also so terrifying. You mean right, 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 the right, right, right. <laughs> right. So yeah, this one guy was like posting pictures of his like shotgun or something. And I was like, yeah, and I just replied, just like one reply. I was like, yeah, that's shotgun. Like I've I've triangulated all of your IP addresses and um <laughs> and, uh, and, and, re- and reported them to my my anti uh, superior officers. You know those. those going back and protect you against drone strikes, and um, <laughs> they they really they really weren't happy about that, <laughs> and uh, they really they really blew that up. And I had like you know I, I think that that was the one that got me banned because that was obviously a threat as absurd. <laughs> As absurd as it was to anybody working at Facebook that would have had to look at that, that you know, when it was reported. But it was a really fun, like around two, you know, the, the, the two days after that until I got banned were like, they were like, try, I think they were like trying to box me and they were like screen, like I was looking at all these other groups and they'd like screenshot of my profile. You in the other group. They were posting in the other groups and like and like my my private messages on Facebook were like I mean just dozens and dozens <laughs> of messages from these people like all of whom I replied with like this picture of Obama and Hillary together <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so yeah so that so that's the story about how I got my last account banned from Facebook but I, I, I said all that to say um, that I just got back on Facebook a couple of weeks ago for the first time in years and like this the account I'm on is a very very old account I think I've had it since like high school right not high school since college. I've had it like yeah, well over well over ten years. I've had it, and um, so like these are you know the, the people that I was friends with on there. Like these are people that like I mean I haven't thought about since high school. You know I mean these are like you know and like I said I'm from Virginia. I mean this is like it's all like everybody's still posted about fake friends and like um, <laughs> <laughs> you know That's kind like, of fun. Like, like, like like get yourself a country boy like memes and stuff like that and like, like minion stuff like the most like normie <laughs> posting ever and but like but like seeing the way that they were all reacting initially to the coronavirus oh, i was yeah. just like oh man like everybody i went to high school with is gonna die <laughs> they, they all think it's fake yeah yeah they all think it's fake i don't yeah i don't know i, I haven't checked in i haven't checked back in in a minute because like i had my fill of like 
browsing, you know, that timeline, I was like, oh man, this is depressing. We did see a lady from our hometown who was uh, posting about the widespread conspiracy that is coronavirus. And it's really just, just cover yeah. for the uh, the pedophile arrests. Oh, my t- told me this week that he believes it is manufactured by China and was released in order to make President Trump look bad. So they sure. took it and made He's it. Correct. <laughs> That's right. Sure. That's mm-hmm. biological warfare so that they can come and release it here and um, it would make Trump and the Republicans look bad. So China right. conspired with the Democrats. <laughs> Well, of course, China had to release it, you know, to test it. They had to release it in their own population first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> got to, like, iron all the kinks out before they send it worldwide. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that only makes sense. I was like, oh, God, okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not going to pretend that I'm not, uh, you know, that I don't tend to have... Uh, oh, we're conspiracy con- people, con- obviously. Conspiratorial, conspiratorial type thinking. But, like, yeah, when, like, when I noticed the, when the first place had spread... After China was Iran, I was like, hmm, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> yes. I found that a bit, <laughs> you know, I wasn't totally bought and sold, but I was like, oh, that's weird. Like, well, you know, I'm going to keep my eyes on it. If it goes to, ben- <laughs> if it goes to Venezuela next. <laughs> yeah. um, I look at his text and he said, um, <laughs> the media is making it very clear they want to assign the Republicans as the cause of all death in America. I know that's not true, and they're hyping it to be this way. The Chinese created this virus to destroy the world economy. I'm very <laughs> suspicious of Bill Gates. There are too many coincidences Whoa, to think I mean, otherwise. <laughs> I, I'm also suspicious of Bill Gates. Yeah, yeah I can't I'm fault like, him yeah. for that. <laughs> well, I, reply, I replied with, fuck Gil, Bill Gates. <laughs> so we're, we're there, too. Hey, yeah. Bill Gates is a is a character in our story today oh, yeah. <laughs> about Monsanto. Well, one of the really, well, by the way, one of the really fun things, speaking of conspiratorial thinking, one of the really fun things about um, about getting back on my old Facebook was, like, was seeing who's in the QAnon now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, yeah, it was, it was, like, you know, all the ones I... You know, once I once I noticed the first one, I was like, "Oh, I bet so and so. I bet this guy's in the QAnon." Uh, and like, I went over the profile, and like, of, of course, he was in the QAnon. You're a leading expert on QAnon, sir. I'm I'm into it. Our <laughs> guest expert on. <laughs> yeah, I'm real into it. Is there like kind of an emergent Corona theory in QAnon, or is it just all over the place? Like, I mean, there is like as far as coronavirus goes, but I mean, everything with QAnon, there is no like singular agreed upon theory you know it's like it's all sort of like a hodgepodge and like everybody you know it's like a grab bag everybody you know who's who's a believer in QAnon like you know they pick and choose and and make their own kind of theory out of everything that's available but yeah I mean some of them um yeah like you were saying many of them believe it's like a you know created a Chinese lab many of them think it's a democrat um, plot. Many of them think that it is to keep people sheltered in place, I guess, so that they can, you know, secretly arrest the deep state sickos yes. or whatever. Oh, like, okay. you know, it's a noble virus then. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. That's new. Yeah. There's all sorts of, uh, there's all sorts of theories um, regarding it. I've, I've been looking into the 5G angle because. Oh, yeah. That's a, oh, yeah. That, yeah. That, that interesting. What is that? Tell me what it is. I keep seeing it referenced. Well, I've had a number of people independently text me about it. Not in a, <laughs> not in a like, have you seen these crazy people? But more like wow have you looked into this 5g thing i think the internet you know there's this plot by the telecommunication companies usually then in league with the chinese or something to spread the virus for some particular reason i mean i know that um at least in that case and in a number of places it's led to people like attacking broadband towers like oh, internet hell broadband yeah, dude. towers <laughs> and setting them on fire oh, as yeah. like patriotic acts to defend uh, the good you know christian american nation against this godless virus we are the greatest country on earth yeah yeah I don't, know, I don't know if you're familiar with Prospector on Twitter, but he just he got his most recent account banned, I believe, for posting "gonna blow up another 5G tower today." <laughs> oh my god! Our other two hosts are gonna be so in love with you because they they are always talking about that guy. Oh yeah, Prospector rules. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I think at least like two years ago. Have you have you guys ever seen a Uline catalog? Oh yeah, dude! Yeah, I used to order from yeah. them all the time at yeah, my old job. 
Yeah. Uh, Liz Uline, yeah. the I think she's the CEO, but she's part of the Uline family. Uh, she has a weird letter in like every edition of the Uline catalog, and I, I think she was on this 5G thing like real early on. <laughs> she, oh no, shit! Yeah, she had one about how 5G means like China is overtaking us in the economy. <laughs> Yeah. And she wasn't going like super far into like how 5G is harming our bodies or anything, but she was <laughs> an was early in adopter, the I think. Catalog? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I got it, it at work. Pa- pa- page 17 is like, you know, mats that you can put down in an industrial <laughs> place so you can stand with good posture. Page 18 is the warning against the Chinese conspiracy <laughs> to infiltrate yeah. your body using microwaves or yeah, whatever. Yeah, just like that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember the first time I saw any type of conspiracy regarding 5G was, I guess, last year. It was somewhere, I think it was somewhere in Tennessee, like in Nashville or Knoxville, when they put up that new, I think it was uh, like a NASCAR museum or something. They just built it, and like all of those birds, like hundreds and hundreds of birds, like all flew into it. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> Jeez. And, like, people, like, people somehow like tied that to 5G because they said they just put 5G in in that city as well and like that's what drove to do it. 5G is making the birds do 9-11 <laughs> all over again. <laughs> is that where Trump's like birds and windmills thing? He was oh, like that's on one of that. The funniest. <laughs> I love that. That's one of my favorite searches of Trump's tweets is birds and windmills. <laughs> like, yeah, he was on that way before he like entered politics in a serious yeah, yeah. way. Cool. That's, like a, that's an issue that he cares about, you know? Like he, every day he thinks about that. Chopping him up, folks. They're chopping him up. Thousands, thousands of beautiful birds and bats. They're chopping him up. You have, a, you have a pretty good Trump impression. Yeah, that's good. Oh, thank you. I'm terrible, imp- terrible at impressions. <laughs> okay, so uh, Chris, as a New Yorker, do you love Cuomo or do you like Cuomo? Is he good or is he super great? And are you excited for him to be nominated for the <laughs> Oh, he's the best. The best. <laughs> he's the best. Yeah, I love it when he's out here in these press conferences every morning. You know, he's he's got his sleeves rolled up, or he's you know wearing a, <laughs> rolling up to get to work. He's wearing a golf shirt. Yeah. Do you think it was? Do you think it was his nipples or tape that one time? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I've heard people talk about that. I I don't think I saw the image of that. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. You you would know if you saw it. It would be burned into your brain. <laughs> so I got to look that up. I got to look up. Uh, I got to Google Cuomo nipples. <laughs> <laughs> to be clear though i'm i'm absolutely not a new yorker <laughs> that's that's the yeah. one thing you want to make sure the audience gets over <laughs> yeah. here do yeah, not yeah, associate yeah. me with that shitty city <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. i'll just go ahead and you know i'll just go ahead and keep pretending i like cuomo but don't you know don't don't, don't, don't get it twisted as far as me being a new yorker <laughs> I genuinely think that it's like on the table for them to swap him out with Joe Biden because I I have all these like rich lib family members that I keep tabs on Facebook and they're all posting. About, well, first of all, my <laughs> posted one of those, you know, when people say that their kids said stuff that they're clearly oh, too young yeah. to oh, say. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, and she posted that her four-year-old daughter saw uh, Cuomo on TV and said he was very handsome and he should become the president of the United States. And then a a tear rolled down her cheek and a bald eagle flew through the window and perched on her shoulder. (laughs) I was like, I have a four-year-old and they're so fucking stupid. (laughs) (laughs) Our four-year-old has said a bunch of pro-Bernie stuff because we sit her down and brainwash her so right exactly exactly I, the Cuomo thing is is weird just because I've again similar not necessarily the same group of people but although there is some overlap I've gotten a lot of like texts apropos of nothing about Cuomo from people be like ah oh, did you see like Cuomo really stuck it to Trump <laughs> why but having all the people die in New York right. like, <laughs> like yeah. was, that, was that the big owning that he did I guess he got into some kind of Twitter spat with him or something but I think there's definitely, like, 
you know, a media push for him and a oh, lot of people yeah. are responding to that. Oh, yeah. CNN is purely like a pro Cuomo propaganda network right now. The Cuomo News Network, folks. <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> okay, so I pulled up the status because it's funny. So her daughter looked up at the TV and said, she wrote, quote, he would make a handsome president. I like his job and he says the right things. Oh, she <laughs> Fucking <didn't>. four. <laughs> yeah. Uh, apparently my daughter, she's uh, <laughs> she's staying um, with my dad because we are like just absolutely dying with her being here 24 hours a day and made up a story about space and one of the characters had an abortion <laughs> she's <laughs> fucking four years old and i'm like oh my god oh my god oh my god oh shit but yeah so everyone stood up and clapped and her daughter definitely said that andrew Cuomo was handsome, that daughter's, she that daughter's is name not- Albert Einstein. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Cuomo reached through the television screen and handed her a $5 bill. <laughs> he sanitized it first because he <laughs> understands. Yeah, I mean, I know I, I, I really wouldn't be surprised if they try to pull some sort of thing where they hand him the nomination. I, I mean, if they want to win, I mean, that might be the only way. That, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, 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 I think that they have to know. They have to know that Biden can't win. I don't think they care. That's a whole other question. But uh, yeah, he doesn't fucking. They don't fucking care. But like. Well, I mean, they're hiding him. They know that every day yeah. you see Joe Biden, yeah. people like Joe Biden less. So, like, <laughs> if they threw Andrew Cuomo in on Halloween or whatever, it would probably be better just because he's somebody else. <laughs> Maybe that's the conspiracy theory. Maybe we cracked it. Maybe the Democrats really did create coronavirus, but it's so they can hide Joe Biden from the public. <laughs> <laughs> and the idea was they would make Cuomo a hero. He's not yeah. doing it, and they're telling us that he is anyway. Yeah, they're just saying it. Don't they have, like, the most cases of any other, like, even every other country in the world? Yes, like, yeah. un- yes. in New yeah. York, yeah. And they have, like, ice morgue trucks. Like, in what in what world is he successful at this? Mm-hmm. The one thing that I think maybe, like, it's obviously, like, a huge media push, but I think there is some, like, lizard brain thing still living in a lot of americans who just want a heroic new york mayor when we have a crisis like there's some 9-11 vestigial ghost in us yeah sure i mean that's the weird thing with like giuliani because he you know he got he got launched into the national spotlight for it and the you know the one way you could look at it is like wow he was the leader on 9-11 the other way you could look at it is like 9-11 happened on his watch (laughs) Like, yeah. isn't that the much more apparent thing? Like, he, it's that like there, baby. he in, in, after after the the ninety three bombing, um, the the attempted destruction of the World Trade Center with like the yeah. uh you know the van uh bomb in the in the basement. Mm-hmm. He you know as a result created this new department. I forget the name of it, but like a citywide department to deal with emergencies. As you know, in case something like that happened again, and of course, as a PR coup, he put it in the fucking twin towers. So on 9 11, <laughs> it was totally up. out of it got blown up, it was totally out of commission and useless. Jesus, yeah. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> hey, attacked before, so. yeah, exactly. Well, you know, the idea is like you can't, you can't try to attack the twin towers, and then you know, they did. <laughs> So Giuliani got did 9-11. Next point. <laughs> I'm not, I, I didn't say that, but I did speculate that. I want to yeah, make that yeah. clear. I did, you know, that's up to the listeners to decide it's whether or not listeners. Giuliani did 9-11. Yeah, I'm a soft 9-11 truther, so I will listen to whatever your 9-11 related <laughs> conspiracies are. Speaking of 9-11, though, I really do think that... Um, I mean, this this coronavirus thing is going to be Trump's 9-11. Like, as much as they want to make it his Katrina, mm-hmm. the, the media, oh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I, I agree, as, yeah. As much as they want to stick this on him and, like, try to criticize no, yeah. him of it, and, of course, there's plenty to criticize, like, you know, he just gave everybody 1200 bucks. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Everyone <laughs> loves a, everyone loves a strong man in this. Everyone loves the 1200 bucks. you know. Yeah. I, I, I really, I think that, honestly, this is only going to help him. Yep. Yeah. Oh God! I just had a horrible thought, and it's definitely gonna happen somewhere. Okay. Some 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 of his loyalists, right? Who like will clearly not need the twelve hundred dollars. Will pool collectively all of their twelve hundred dollars together to build a fucking statue of him somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mister Trump. 
<laughs> yeah, and they'll go. They'll wake up every day. You know how they had like the kids going out like in suburbs, like w- saluting the flag or whatever in the morning, even though they're not <laughs> oh, at school. God. There'll be a there'll yeah. be a Trump on every cul-de-sac, and every morning you'll wake up and say, "Thank you, good sir, Mr. Trump, sir. Thank you so much." I'm gonna go back into the bunker now. <laughs> I mean, I, for you know, me personally, I mean, I, I just turned around and donated the entire 1200 to his re-election campaign <laughs> yeah, yeah, as, a, as a way of saying thank you oh yeah of course okay so i assume that we are seeing a man show reboot soon with the eat the rich boys because you've been having an exchange chris on twitter with adam carolla so wondering how good he's doing and how you're best friends <laughs> um i mean he's not doing as well as uh, as jimmy kimmel is <laughs> um, what was the impetus of that no honestly i'm gonna show my ass a little bit here as like someone who like honestly like doesn't even half the time do the cursory glance to figure out why i'm supposed to be dunking on somebody before i dunk on them <laughs> <laughs> i'm not really sure i i think he, what was it he was you know, he was replying to vic berger <laughs> Vic right, Berger right, like yeah. did a post about him. I guess he had some stupid comment about coronavirus. I'm not even sure. I'm not even <laughs> sure. I'm not even sure what it was. But I saw Vic Berger, you know, shitting on him, and I saw him replying to Vic Berger. So, you know, I just went for it. The, the funny thing is, though, and I, I think I mentioned this on our show yesterday. Like that's really because like this works with James Woods every single time. Like I've done this to James <laughs> Woods. <laughs> Pretty much every time I get banned and every time I create a new account, the very first thing I do is go and get blocked by James Woods again. And, uh, because it's so easy. All you, you know, all you have to do, like for him, I pretty much reply the same thing every time. Like, LOL, remember when you used to be in movies? And, uh, That's enough. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, that really gets <laughs> that really gets under the skin. But yeah, like you no, know, I basically did the same thing with Adam Carolla. Where it's just like uh, I was like, hey Adam, you know, you know, longtime fan. You know, I was really I, I really <laughs> liked you know, the Man Show twenty years ago. You know, I haven't had much of you since then. Have you been getting any work? And um, you know, out of like the four hundred or like three hundred and seventy people who replied to that post of his, like mine was the one <laughs> that like you know that was like tailor made. Funny how that always seems to happen okay, that, was, <laughs> that was taylor made to get under his skin and um that was the one he um that was the one he quote tweeted and um i was very very d- delighted to, to to um very delighted by the fact that um after he did that like i changed my display name you know as one does to uh to adam grohl <laughs> diaper so that when you look at his <laughs> So that when you look at his account, you know, you see that right there on the quote tweet. But like after he replied to me, like, he, like, I think he looked like he walked away from Twitter. He didn't come back to it for like 13 hours. <laughs> so it was just like right there at the top of his page, like all day, <laughs> which was, uh, that was pretty, that was pretty satisfying. Very satisfying. I need to go. I'm going to go to a band by James Woods now. Oh yeah. Did you get like the very public? Did I know he does a lot of like, you're blocked now. And also. Insta block. Insta block. Oh, Insta- there we go. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then something about fucking your mom. Usually I feel like there's a lot yeah. of fucking yeah. jokes from him. Yeah. He did. Um, what was it? Um, he's, I've, I've got the Insta block thing twice. Uh, he, I don't remember what the last. Well, the last one was something about yeah, fucking your mom. Like, that's what he always goes for. But like the the one, um, like a, a year or two ago, when I did it a time before, like I, I I said, you know, my reply was like, remember when you used to be in movies? And he was like, what did he say? He's like, remember when you used to be? Remember when you used to be on your knees under the highway overpass or something? <laughs> He's like hashtag Insta block. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Real good. <laughs> What's so funny is that like like the, the best part about that happening, like even even better than him replying is I mean, he has got just a whole legion of devoted fans who will then spend the next day or two defending his honor in your DMs <laughs> and in your replies, you know, and like like it's like they'll all quote tweet him or like post it or like talk about like what a savage like how savage he is and like what a good own that was it's like 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 your mom's basement is not a savage own 
like, <laughs> like that is like you know other other than like the you know the, the the pronouns in the bio thing like that is the second conservative joke like that's all they've got right. like is the mom's the mom's basement and they're like i identify as a attack helicopter like that. those are the two <laughs> so, jokes yeah, they yeah. have. Yeah. <laughs> oh his bio says if you get your knickers in a twist i couldn't care less Certainly seems like he does, because he's real mad at you. He does. I'm putting LOL remember when you used to be in movies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I encourage everybody to do that. Yeah. There's another, there's another really funny um, right-wing actor that, that uh, a couple of us have gotten into before. His name is Nick Searcy, and he's the guy from Justified, the television show. Okay, and yeah. um, he's a big MAGA guy on Twitter. But I believe if you look at his profile... If you look at his bio, he's, his bio says, um, the embitchener of liberals. <laughs> nice. Okay. So he, he embitched got him. I got him. Got him. Killing it. Got him. But yeah, you can obviously, you can do the exact same thing with him. You just got to remind these guys that they don't get any work. <laughs> <laughs> Did he even used to be in movies? Or... Yeah, yeah. That's, that's how you get them. That's how you get them. That's how you hit them where it hurts. My primary goal in life has been to get blocked by all the liberal feminists that I used to love 15 years ago <laughs> who have now turned into fucking frightening psychopaths. Like, I got the Amanda Marcotte block. Um, <laughs> I got the feminist next door block for posting the tweet about how she's a Wall Street lawyer on every single one of her <laughs> and about how Wall Street is good and funds your mortgage. <laughs> I've been working on Charlotte Clymer for years because I have that picture of her where she is pretending to arrest a, a black dude dressed as a cop. And I put oh, it on everything. Yeah. yeah, and she fucking won't block me. And it's very, very... She knows ex- that you want it and she's not going to give it to you. She's <laughs> yep, holding yeah. that sweet block. I think she might have me block and I don't think I've ever even interacted with her. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm feeling like a real sad small person. <laughs> I can't even get her to talk to me. <laughs> I like to imagine that the, the Chris's Avi, which is the fucking monkey from Jumanji, is like mm-hmm. hanging up in a bunch of rooms and different <laughs> offices. And things. They're like, you block on sight. If you see this monkey come at you, especially if he's smoking a cigarette, you gotta block him. It's like a pull right behind the, the cash register. <laughs> like, do not serve this man. <laughs> Got a got a big yarn string that goes across yeah, yeah. Connects oh, yeah, oh, yeah. the deep state <laughs> <laughs> to a five G tower. Like. <laughs> tech. Okay, so my next question is: What is your Etheridge origin origin story, and how do you choose topics? Because sometimes it's current events, and sometimes it isn't. Sometimes it's just like classic. Look at the, look at this fucking freak. Because <laughs> <laughs> I feel like who is the Africa guy that like cannibalized? Oh, General Butt Naked. Yeah, oh, Butt Naked rules. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Briefly. Um. Okay. So, how do you choose the topic, and how did the show start? Um. I mean, the show started. I mean, we all were in a a couple of different like group chat things, and we'd been chatting for um uh you know a couple months, and and. You know, the three of us and a couple of other people, we'd gotten kind of close. And just so how did they get rejected and cut? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I don't think it was, you know, it wasn't like we made some selective decision in that thing. I think it was just happenstance that um, the three of us happened to be relatively geographically close. So we met up one night for to do something entirely else. And, you know, we, we met up and there was some chemistry and we were talking and. And I'd had this idea for a long time, you know, to do a kind of research-based comedy politics show about, you know, sort of interrogating and looking at the specific histories of these people because, you know, the ruling class is a structural concept, but it's also a phrase that gets thrown around on the left a lot. And sometimes even, you know, when I'm using those phrases, I, I try to think, like, what do I really mean by this? Like, who am I talking about? And sometimes when it's left as a nebulous phrase like that, it can feel something that's totally out of touch and like, oh, that's something you can't really challenge. There's something immutable about it. You can't affect it. But then you realize like, no, these people have like names and addresses um, and, you know, like (laughs) terrible histories. And the reason why they're in power, they have a lot of money or whatever. You know, these are all contingent things that don't have to be that way. And and in particular, for a lot of the people who, who have that money, you know, they've deliberately obfuscated what their 
personal histories are, what the real story is of like big corporations that are around today. Yeah, and how many people they've killed with their cars. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's the weird thing. I mean, I I didn't even intend it to be like super focused on you know, the, their personal morality or whatever, but it's just like every single one of them, you peel a, one layer away. And it's just like, oh my God, this person is an awful piece of shit. Um, I, I, I did. That's what I'm into. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the stuff I'm into. I'm into the real like sickos and freaks. And <laughs> the real most dangerous game types. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so then we just, we kind of came together, and of course, like, after after we started putting some ideas together, and we put together, like, a big list of, like, here are all the people we might want to talk about, you know, the first kind of ones that would come off the top of your head, we put together this whole list, and we haven't even gone through all of those people, because other things keep popping up, um, and then, and then, you know, as we were deciding okay maybe we should try out doing a show of this we found there there are a couple of shows that do similar things and a few more have have arisen while we've been doing ours over the past year or so and we talked with some of those people and there was sort of this common agreement that like there's plenty of awful people to go around you know (laughs) and there's plenty of space to talk about this so that was kind of our our origin i think I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to do the PG version of the origin, you know. <laughs> we have excellent bleeping and cutting staff here. Okay, yeah. And and Justin he has got me saying some very very heinous things. <laughs> yeah, criminal things even. <laughs> <laughs> I've talked about crimes I've done. I've called the yeah. Very bad. Well, Very bad. Too. Thank you. I have some cuts I want you to make already, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> the real the real story then in that case, if if you know, just between us, the real story is I the second I laid my eyes on Chris and Dwight, and here you can just cut in that sound effect of like a woo <gasps> like, eyes popping out of the skull. I was like, these are the boys. <laughs> Before we move on too far, I do I do want to say, um, did you guys ever see General Butt Naked's personal Facebook profile? Yeah, when we talked about him on the show, like it wasn't any anything prepared. It was just like a side note. That I believe that that's what Dwight was saying was that he had, um, yeah, found him on Facebook or something, and that he actually like at one point um, spoke to him on the phone. I believe. Jesus. <laughs> oh, why did I not remember? It's so scary. Like he's killed like a bunch of children, and he's just mm-hmm. like walking around now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just among us, <laughs> man. They're they're all running together because I think I'm thinking of someone else. There's so many. They're so terrible. Oh, they're yeah, no, they're, for sure. I mean, there's it's literally endless. And I think that was part of the idea of you know when we started the show, worrying about like, oh, are we gonna have like content to put out every week? And it's just it's like I said, we have this list of people that, you know, we want to talk about and topics and different companies and things. And and like you said, you know, sometimes just stuff comes up in the news and it's like, all right, well, let's talk about this then because it's so prevalent, you know? And I think yeah. in part, the motivation behind it is as, as leftists, but also just as people, you know, you grow up and you live in a social reality where all of this is just taken for granted and, you know, these these people exist in these positions of incredible wealth and authority, mm-hmm. uh, many of which who are involved in making your life shittier. Yeah. Like not not in yes. an abstract way, like specifically, no, yeah. like you specifically and, and depending on where you are geographically, there is some rich asshole who has made your life worse. Yeah. And and so in a certain way, it's kind of a response to that. And that's where then some of the kind of more. um you know, topical shows and and topics that we touch on come from. It's just like, honestly, sometimes we're just kind of talking to each other. It's just like, oh my God, I saw this and it pissed me off so much. I'm so (laughs) angry about it. And so it's kind of a collective expression of of rage, I guess, in that sense. Yeah, like, you know, the culture is such, if we don't carve out these kind of leftist media spaces, I mean, every single person knows all the normie people in their life telling you about how great Bill Gates is for funding Ugh. all this anti-coronavirus oh, stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, he started out at a loss. He started these 12 <laughs> companies to like, yeah. And I, I mean, I have so many things come back to what fucking frothy psychopath he is, um, mm-hmm. including some of the stuff I have for today. But it's just like, they have so like... American culture and American media have so thoroughly ingrained this like billionaire worship into us 
mm-hmm. um, to the point that like they've made minions online who will yell at you if you say that billionaires are bad. Mm-hmm. Or like if you talk about Bill Gates, they'll be like, you know, it isn't really fair that he has so much money, but he's one of the good ones. So should we really like <laughs> Like, right, oh right, right. After you notice, after you sign the giving pledge, you get richer every year. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, oh, you're yeah. on you're on firm moral ground anytime the phrase "one of the good ones" comes out, though. So, <laughs> <laughs> moving on for what I oh, I'm trying to decide whether to start with Cargill or Mar- Monsanto. Cargill is started in Iowa. There's less to say about it just because it's it's a company that is still private. It's the largest private company in the world. We'll we'll do a little bit on that. So this is this is super quick on Cargill um, because it's really really hard to find any information. But I feel like I have some pretty incredible quotes from a couple of the ex- executives to round this out. So um, Cooper looked into some of the stuff about Cargill. Um, I don't know. Do you do you two kind of know anything at all about corporate agriculture? Do you know about like GMOs and what's happened with them and stuff? I, I know with um, certainly with Monsanto, they do that thing where they like they patent um, <clears throat> yeah, agricultural yeah, yeah, yeah. products yep. and then they yep. make it. So they have these like weird Franken seed things that so yep, that you, yep. if you buy the seeds, you can't like the, the plants won't produce their own seeds. Mm-hmm. That keeps you in this yep. perpetual loop or you're indebted to the company and you have to rely on them. Right. Yep. Yep. And they have like literal seed armies that go out and stock farmers to make sure that they are um, not sharing them with anyone else and you'll get sued if your seeds blow into the nearby farm. Yeah, right. even by yeah. that. It's so fucked up. Yep. I know. So there's some good stories about people being stalked by Monsanto. Um, so that's the next thing. But um <laughs> man, there's just they're just so much. And like you wouldn't think it was that interesting, but it really fucking is. They're the they're fucking freaks. Um, and they all started out as like heinous chemical companies. Like mm-hmm. Monsanto is the one who developed agent orange. Like, yeah. And yeah. then they, and then they go and rebrand themselves. Like uh, Monsanto bills itself as a, a quote, relatively new company. Um, even though it's been around for 120 years, <laughs> they will just, they sp- spin off and then use the like chemical company spin off to settle all the lawsuits and then file bankruptcy and then rebrand themselves as new Monsanto. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Try, try Monsanto classic. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the big the big move. So in, in 97, they spun all of their chemical products to a new company called Solutia. Um, so that they could be nothing but agriculture. And so all of the lawsuits went along with Solutia and okay. it went bankrupt within six years. <laughs> so yeah, Monsanto.com calls itself a relatively new company. <laughs> a new company on the agriculture scene. And it actually says not the old Monsanto on the website. <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs> okay, okay. We're going to start with Cargill though. Hey, Natalie? There's less to say about that. What? Um. Uh, Quick request. Can you say the word orange again? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's the orange. Okay. I, I don't know. The first time. No, you, it sounded funny is all. I just wanted to hear the way you say the word orange. <laughs> <laughs> I say a lot of words wrong. Okay. And and a lot of, I can't, I don't understand idioms very well. So <laughs> say like a lot of incorrect idioms. Okay. So Cooper's going to start with Cargill. Yes. Um, okay. Have you guys ever attempted to like look into the Cargills for your show? No, not, not. that. I've I've heard the name before, and I think I've seen them in a couple of headlines and stuff, but I've never looked into them. It's I don't know if I just have lost all of my research skills, or but they seem to be the some of the mo- more secretive, oystered off of. I mean, Cargill is one of the biggest food companies on earth, and it is the largest privately owned corporation in the u.s so like the the cargill family is the fourth as of 2016 it was the fourth wealthiest family in america and like nobody knows a goddamn thing about them it's wild so i had a quote of um at 50 billion in animal annual sales also animal sales interesting (laughs) but yeah Cargill is twice the size of its biggest rival. It's bigger than Procter & Gamble, AOL, Time Warner, or Merrill Lynch. It's the 19th largest company in America. Wow. They operate out of 59 countries, and you don't even know the name 
of how like you, when you look up their family tree you it'll just be like information unknown information unknown yeah so the uh there appear forbes appears to have kind of this weird like hate boner for them i think precisely because they cannot figure them out <laughs> so they i'm looking at like a family tree chart right now that is <laughs> that forbes did that uh like this the different members, different generations, and their respective shares of the company. And then there is a generation where they just have names, dates of birth, and then a big black circle that says children unknown. <laughs> <laughs> they just cannot. And the, the, they're the only like huge business that I see for just constantly openly attacking, which is obviously not the Forbes way normally, <laughs> but just something about the their inability to like crack this nut. So like the only the little bit of information that I have, they started in 1865 as a small grain storage company. This is uh like their little bio of themselves. Today the agro giant is the largest private company in the world with nearly 120 billion dollars in revenue and 130,000 employees in 63 countries. Oh, I'm sorry. This is from Forbes, actually, because this next thing would not have been. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the secret of Cargill family still owns 88% of the company, but the wealth has passed down three or four generations now. Oof. So there are at least 14 billionaires in the Cargill. Oh, wow. and, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> like, if you put them together, they're, like, bigger than the Waltons. Yeah. Uh, easily. Wow. Like. But we don't know anything about any of them. Yeah. No names, nothing, because they're a private company and they're the only one of this size. So who the fuck knows what they're doing? My my absolute favorite quote. So I, I have wealth totals for four of them. Um, so on the Forbes 400 currently, uh, there is a there, there's a Macmillan family married in at some point. Um, at number 100 on the Forbes or the Fortune 400, sorry. Uh, Pauline McKellen Kenneth has six point three billion dollars for a net worth. Mm -hmm. Six point three billion. Uh quoting them, Pauline McMillan Kenneth is believed to be the largest stakeholder of Cargill, the largest food company in the world with an estimated twelve percent stake. Just there's just six point three billion dollars, and we think this is probably how much of the company it represents. <laughs> 128 is Whitney McMillan at 5.1 billion. Uh, sadly, uh, Whitney <laughs> passed away in March of this year. Uh, so at, sad. Uh, so yeah. Sad. And, was, it the, uh, uh, was it the corona? <laughs> <laughs> well, it didn't say that it wasn't, so it probably <laughs> was. Um, he was relatively young at 90. Uh, <laughs> but, and he was the, uh, significantly, he was the last member of the Cargill McMillan family to serve as CEO. Um, not to say that there won't be a future one, but this, they now, as of, as of March, have their, their first non-family CEO. He was still CEO when he was 90? Oh, my apologies. No, I, I oh, okay. wrote that down wrong. Yeah, <laughs> he was still up there. But Yeah, he was an executive, but I have some some fun quotes from the oh, the current yeah. CEO, but you can finish okay. up with her. Yeah, the, just the last little. Uh, so uh, the other things we actually know. Oh, he retired in 95. My apologies. Okay. So he was, yeah, 65. I'm not going to try to do math on the fly. That sounds right to me. Um, and then tied at numbers uh, at number two twenty five are Austin Cargill the second at three point six billion and a James Cargill the second at six or three point six billion. So I mean those are just the ones that crack the top hundred. Mm -hmm. And again, we kind of know names and faces and what they say publicly, and there just seems to be nothing else out there. It's it's the antithesis of this idea of kind of putting a face on. <laughs> what the ruling class is they have managed to scrub their faces from the world it's it's just kind of yeah. which is smart in, from mean, their yeah. position yeah yeah absolutely it's just like it's wild and we like consider ourselves to be kind of good at digging but like can't find anything and it's just even like because if you're a private company you have to give nothing so yeah. these people are the richest people on the planet but we don't hear about them the same way we hear about like bezos or whatever so yeah. we we can't <laughs> them <laughs> <laughs> justin maybe a wacky sound effect on that one. <laughs> the waltons uh you know we, we did our first episode on the waltons and um you know they're they, well they seem not even quite this secretive but the, yeah the waltons um 
they're fairly secretive as well. There's not quite, there's not so much information on them out there. Well, that's, I mean, that, that kind of money can buy you that kind of right, privacy, absolutely, right? Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's part of the point. I mean, think about how much, uh, you know, all of us is just, you know, independent, regular fucking people, like how much of us could be easily found, you know, just by a cursory search on the internet or yep. whatever. And, um, you know, the way that our, our private information is just made public and yet the richest people in the world, the people who run everything, you know, if you try to take a real look into them, all you know, like you said, you you come up against a brick wall pretty easily unless they happen to already also fancy themselves as some kind of public figure like Bezos right. or Musk like or whatever. Like Elon Musk, yeah. But otherwise it's like it's it's creepy to try to look up these people because it'll just be like person unknown, just like total like just total blackness and like um, so I had some like other wild statistics. Um, apparently they control a quarter of Russia's national bond market, which is <laughs> fucking wild. I'm sure there's nothing uh a quarter of our beef, a quarter of our grain, a fifth of our turkeys, like and we just know absolutely nothing about them. But I got, so our new CEO, the first one outside the family, <laughs> is named mm-hmm. Staley. He's been the CEO since 99. He wants to sh- reshape Cargill into a more sensible giant with a sharper focus on his origins. And new cooperation, the quote he gave is, quote, to grow our opportunities. This is in the fucking, this was in a Forbes article. He said this shit out loud to a reporter on the record. Just so we're aware, <laughs> just want to be clear. Um, to grow our opportunities, we have to shrink our sandbox. That means telling our businesses, we won't starve you, but we may shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. His name is Staley? Like Lane Staley? I don't I don't know what his first name is because I have They didn't give his first name. No, it did, but I I took a screenshot. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then I thought this was fun. Um, which is kind of which is an Iowa thing. I live in Des Moines, so that's what made me think of this. But a oh, Warren Staley, American investor. Mm, yeah. Okay, so here is the other interesting quote from one of the articles that I just thought was fucking funny. Talking, so the whole thing is about the future of Cargill. So that's what this interview is. So he's not starving, but shooting some of his off spin businesses. But um, so Anderson Eric Erickson and Dairy in Des Moines, Iowa, um, now makes a new soy yogurt from a soy protein isolate that Cargill touts for its blandness and manufactures <laughs> in a factory in Ohio that opens <laughs> last month. French Meadow, a Minnesota bakery, uses cargo soy flour to bake breads for men and breads <laughs> <What>? for women. <laughs> what? His and her breads? What does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> so the his bread <laughs> has a sterile content that's touted as a natural way to prevent heart disease. And for women, they put in plant hormones that limit the effects of menopause. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> well, it, was a, uh, it reminded me there's this diner I went to like in my area and it's got like they got like one breakfast it's called like the hungry man and it's like three eggs bacon sausage potatoes ham it's like a bunch of different types of meats you know what I'm saying and then like and then it's like twelve dollars, right? And then for like for the same price for like twelve dollars, it's the hungry woman. <laughs> but it's like it's just like a it's just like a plate a a plate of fruit. <laughs> like, 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 oh you oh you want a healthier choice? Try our woman meal. Guys guys, is it gay to eat fruit? <laughs> <laughs> It's the same price too, which is so funny. That's great. I imagine like a, f- a father and son going into the diner, and the father ordering the hungry man meal, and the, and the son sort of sheepishly trying to order like the hungry woman meal, and the father like, no, get him two hungry mans. He's got to learn the way of the world. Like Bobby from King of the Hill. Yeah, it's Bobby Hill. I was gonna say that. <laughs> but Bobby can eat. He wouldn't order fruit, so. It doesn't quite work. He likes meat. But <laughs> if if they haven't branded the bread for men as the man bun, then I'm gonna be very upset with this company. Uh, Thank you, folks. Thank you. Oh man, what about what's what's that what's that fucking coffee company you like, Chris? It's oh, like black rifle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They should do that but with bread. Like, you know, <laughs> fucking 
M16 croissants. Have <laughs> 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 you ever seen uh, have you ever seen Dave's Killer Bread, which is actually really good? Um, you ever seen no, that? What is the, it? Their, their branding is like, like the packaging. It's like some guy with like a beard and a ponytail, and he's like playing an electric guitar, and it's called <laughs> Dave's Killer Bread. <laughs> <laughs> Man bread right there, but it's good. It's good as hell. It's good as hell. Right there. <laughs> Masculine bread is not a phrase I thought I'd be walking away from this way, but I, I, that, that is now firmly in my mind. Do you remember? This is going way off on a tangent, but do you remember? And this is like the kind of thing that I don't even think could exist even now. But like three years ago, there was that branding there was those commercials for that like dr pepper with like 10 calories or something in it and it was like the, the whole branding was like it's it's the dr pepper for men what <laughs> i do yeah. not no yeah, way. It's like, just, like it's not a diet soda because like we know diet sodas are for women but <laughs> if you want something that's only got 10 calories and full flavor like oh so it had to have some calories right exactly <laughs> and I, 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 I believe that literally like the tagline in the ad was it's not for women <laughs> That's fucking incredible. Very, uh, if I recall correctly, very short lived ad campaign. <laughs> <laughs> There's a really funny men's makeup company that I just. Well, oh, what's it? Oh my god, what? Oh, War Paint. So. <laughs> oh, <cool. laughs> <laughs> oh, I've seen that. I've seen yeah, that. Yeah, 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 because yeah, yeah. that is the commercial is fucking incredible. You got to look it up. <laughs> you like you know that makeup is not generally you just buy makeup. This is like a, a another big tangent. And I'm sorry to get off track here, but just on this conversation, you guys know the the mascot Spuds McKenzie. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. the sure. dog, right? Yeah. No, no, no. That they they did like a riff on it, but there was a there was an actual. I'm thinking of yeah, uh, Slurms. Yeah. Slurms McKenzie. Oh, that Slurms was McKenzie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always just think of the original Party Worm. That was based on something. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 that was based on um in like the 80s. There was this this whole push in. I think it was Budweiser, Bud Light, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I think it was. And, Bud. and so Spuds McKenzie was like, uh, they got like a dog to be like the mascot and they shot all these commercials and they and they all had these like catchy songs and the idea was like the dog would be like you know dog would have like sunglasses and be hanging out on the beach and there'd be all these like hot babes like around <laughs> the dog and they'd be like oh my god who's that and be like that's spuds mckenzie the original oh party animal oh my god i just looked it up oh my fucking god so these commercials were a big hit right they were they were come up by some like fucking 20 year old cokehead like you know son of somebody else who worked at the marketing firm or whatever and was like we're gonna have a cool party dog and so they shot all these commercials and it was a big campaign i mean they had t-shirts you know they had hats they had like fucking lamps you could buy that were in the shape of the dog and then it came out that the dog in the commercial that they used was a female dog <laughs> And so, like, and so the commercials were obviously aimed at, like, a, you know, a male audience, 18 to 25 or whatever. And so when that happened, there was this, like, huge backlash against, I guess, and so people, like, all these dudes were like, I'm not going to party with a girl dog. And they were, like, burning their fucking Spuds McKenzie's, like, t-shirts and lamps and records and shit, being like, I can't believe I was betrayed by a girl dog. That's fucking incredible. Oh, why would I, as an adult man, wear a t-shirt with a dog on it if that dog doesn't even have a dick? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I can't even drink Bud the same way anymore, man. <laughs> Wasn't the taco? Well, I think the Taco Bell dog was a girl too, right? I'm not sure. I believe. Uh, I think we. Well, I think we've been. He didn't again. sound like a girl. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> it's another deep sp- state conspiracy. <laughs> Spuds McKenzie is personally going around giving out coronavirus on behalf of the Chinese government or whatever. What was like, what does it imply? I mean, he's just cool because he wears sunglasses and beer is always with him. Like, what is the impl- Like, what does he do to party? Well, sometimes he'd also be wearing a Hawaiian shirt. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then you know for real, you know. And are the women admiring him or? Are they all trying to get with the dog? Like, what are what are the the, the yeah, what's the here? there? <laughs> I, 
I mean, look, you you can watch the commercials and, <laughs> and make your own determination. I think there's obviously there's a heavy implication in the sort of tongue in cheek way that these girls are like, wow, he's a real hunk. Um, I think I that's it. actually a line from one of the commercials where they go, what a hunk. <laughs> and it cuts to this like, you know, female dog with the tongue hanging out, like just hanging out. I mean, the dog looks like they're having a great time. Yeah, you know, I'm I mean, sure the dog was fucking excited as shit. For sure. That dog is dead now. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be a doubter, it just be, you know, empirically, the amount of time that's passed. It's that dog is long dead. It's a very dead dog. But the but the memories last forever. <laughs> Uh, I'm just all I can think of now is Budweiser, the beer that makes you want to fuck a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, don't cut that. <laughs> oh, I won't. I won't. I would never. Okay, so I am going to talk about Monsanto now, which is like, I mean, the number of hours you could spend talking about this company is like, I, you know, I'm only going to run through some like wild anecdotes because there's really no way to even get started with this shit one time i was i was hitchhiking right and i got i was hitchhiking across the country and i got picked up by this trucker by this truck driver and um i'm pretty sure he was on methamphetamine because he literally did talk about monsanto for like <laughs> eight hours straight, just like ranted about monsanto and gmo <laughs> so, yeah, so it is possible I, i've heard it I've heard it. <laughs> well, and that's the, it's a thing where I feel like I, for years, treated it like a QAnon pizza game. Like it, yeah. the things, you, people act crazy about it. And then you look into it and you're like, oh no, it's actually just the worst company on earth. Exactly. Like it's just that bad. Yeah. There's kind of a hippie thing against GMOs, but like actually Monsanto is like a horrible mm-hmm. corporation. Yeah. I mean, the concept of GMOs is value neutral for the record, but mm-hmm. like, Monsanto is a fucking, uh, it's c- astonishingly evil. They did, yeah. like, they invented every single, like... Coronavirus strain. Yeah, they... <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> honestly, I'm losing my mind. Maybe they fucking did. I don't know. They invented Agent Orange and DDT and PCBs and dioxin and, like, it's just, like, fucking everything. I found one time, and I wish I could find it again. Man, I almost believed it. It, it was really weird. I found this account on twitter and the guy was claiming to have like they, they had like no followers right and, and he was just like the whole account seemed to have been created just to like at journalists and, and stuff like that and like try and like tell them to investigate like claiming that he worked at um some sort of monsanto factory in the 80s or something and that monsanto manufactured the gas that uh went to iraq to gas the kurds they did. They did. That's a real thing. Um, Monsanto was deeply involved in the in Iraq and in the like reconstruction, quote unquote. So they have complete rights to all um, Iraqi agriculture to use Roundup Ready, uh, like soybeans and anything they grow there. They mm-hmm. had an executive on the like transition team. Like they were deeply, deeply involved in Iraq. Fucked up shit. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm trying to remember the name of the guys, but yeah, they like are attempting to like mo- monopolize agriculture, and they were really involved in Iraq, which is fucking messed up. I, you start to sound crazy. Like I'm I'm fucking crazy. I'm losing my goddamn mind. I'm gonna believe in chemtrails tomorrow. Like <laughs> I'm like really, I'm like I'm teetering on the edge here. Like <laughs> just absolutely losing it. Like welcome they, to the club. No kidding. Um, <laughs> they were involved in the Manhattan Project. Um, they were the ones who invented Agent Orange. They were the ones who invented DDT. I don't know. The the chemical background of Monsanto, like I I barely even want to get started because we could talk about it for for eight hours, yeah. Or more. And it's like not as much like agriculture themed, which I tried to do because of Iowa or whatever but there are a couple of like kind of wild anecdotes about just how fucking abusive they are first of all they start like you know how disneyland has like a city like they they have a place called monsanto illinois and it's just like Uh, monsanto city um for the record it is no longer monsanto uh they built it because time it was like pre-epa so like most 
laws about environmental protection and just human protection were local so they okay, just started yeah. the town so they could <laughs> literally course. write the laws and that was <laughs> the first big manufacturer of pcbs was located there but it the, i don't remember the name now but now it's a town of 159 people in illinois presumably just some sort of like i assume they all glow and it's yeah know, they're all mutants know, yeah, yeah. they're nuka caps all over the all over the ground <laughs> and, <laughs> bad stuff in the 1950s like there there have been tons of um like chemical explosions and like class action lawsuits and like you know all kinds of like cities just decimated with you know <laughs> oh our fucking dog um but this one i thought was particularly interesting because of the like weird extra horror of it um but in one of their plants where they are making herbicides uh, pressure valve blue. This was uh, in West Virginia, in a town called Nitro, um, on a container. <laughs> right? I've, uh, I think I've been through there. It sounds very really? familiar. Yeah. So they were making a batch of herbicide. The noise that was released a scream so loud that it drowned out the emergency steam whistle. So people didn't know that it was happening because the explosion was so like the scream at the vapor was so loud. Um, it says a plume of vapor and white smoke drifted across the plant and out over the town. Residue from the explosion coated the interior of the building and those inside were completely coated in a fine black powder and they felt their skin start to prickle. Oh, um, no. Yeah, within days, the workers experienced skin eruptions. So what happened is they had a form of death acne called chloroacne, um, which is also the thing that killed that Ukrainian guy. Remember that? Remember that Ukrainian? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know how you saw him like slowly get this like his body covered in like severe acne pustules? It covers you inside out and you die via acne. It's th the kind of shit that like you can't even make it up. It's it's fucking incredible. They were diagnosed with chloracne, a condition similar to acne, but with severe lo long lasting and disfiguring in their ch in their chest, insides, uh, um, like all over their body. These men are excreting. They were excreting the foreign chemical out of its skin because it was so coated on the. And the Mount Monsanto released a statement saying that there was a they had a, an explosion of a fairly slow slow acting skin irritant, but that everything was fine. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and wow. Then, yeah, and then the retired Monsanto workers exposed to dioxin, they later decided that they were going to um, bring a lawsuit. Um, they were unsuccessful, yeah. and Monsanto attached liens to all their homes to guarantee oh, collection God. of debts, and got a hundred or got three hundred and five thousand in court costs from each of the. Uh, I mean, each of them from each of them. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I wonder, oh, yeah. So there's this town called Anniston, Alabama. A lot of people have heard of it because of the PCB thing. There's so much of it. Um, but they were dumping PCBs in the river there um, and pretending that they had no idea that they were harmful. And then they tried to get a contract with the Navy to put this stuff in submarines. And so they, Monsanto did a bunch of independent testing to show that it was safe enough to go in the military submarines with the military ended up declining because it was so unsafe, like, <laughs> which is <Jesus> wild. <laughs> Christ. Did you say, did you say PCB? PCB. You say what, what that yeah. stands for? Did I miss that? It's some kind of like chemical lubricant. Okay. It was used as like a, uh, a lubricant and coolant for like huge industrial things. Um, I guess like trans there might still be some transformers that use them because it was like so poorly regulated. Mm. But yeah, it's just the, it, it's a short some sort of very fancy science word like poly yeah, poly polychlorinated biphenyl looks like sounds right yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's nasty it has like it's it can't be like it's indestructible by like fire or it's like sunlight <laughs> is the only thing that can cause it to start to break down like Damn. it all vampiric. sounds vampiric vampiric yeah <laughs> yeah i mean if it was like the, with the nitro story i was thinking the whole time it's like if that was a Batman comic, it would be too <laughs> fucking far fetched. But right, like a screaming death, death cloud, by acne. <laughs> 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 like, that's, yeah, that's that's the origin story of like Two Face or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like when they were conducting studies to give to the Navy, um, one of the biologists said, 
later at the Washington Post that he they had been dumping it in the streams near this um, city and he put fish into the streams and then tested them to see like how toxic it was <laughs> and all 25 fish lost equilibrium turned on their side in 10 seconds and were all dead in three and a half minutes oh my god and this is the water that the whole town is and yeah. this plant decided to start donating a bunch of the soil from the lawns in the like plant area so everyone's lawn is poisoned to this day <laughs> Naturally, naturally. It's just it's just so sickening. And we've talked about this, I believe, on more than one episode. We've talked about, like, we did a, a series of episodes about, like, coal barons. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it's just time and time again that, you know, the people of West Virginia who are the poorest, among the poorest in the country, you know, continually fall victim to the fucking the negligence of these corporations just literally poisoning them poisoning their water poisoning their soil Mm -hmm. forever i mean at least on any kind of human time scale right yeah i I mean certainly for the rest for the rest of your life probably your your children's lives probably their children anybody who stays in the area for the next hundred years i mean it's tantamount to just fucking turning these areas into like you know um, america is littered with mini chernobyls like this Mm -hmm. you know just just these small pockets of areas sometimes um you know, almost, you know, huge municipalities or, you know, medium-sized cities that are just permanently fucked up for at least the next 100 to 200 years because of uh, chemical companies and stuff dumping this kind of shit. It's it's obscene. Mm-hmm. And nothing. And they, they the, the kinds of attorneys they have, like, they people never get a fucking dime. I started to dive into the seed stuff, which is their, their major grift now. Mm-hmm. And, like... The, the way they come after farmers is just they go full fire. Like they are known for just going crazy on like the smallest people. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's impossible to ever get any damages from any of them. Well, part of the strategy, if I'm if I'm correct, at least I know with Monsanto is right. Like the strategy there of suing the farmers, like in the case you brought up earlier of, you know, whatever the seeds from one farm blowing onto another. And then Monsanto yep. could show up and say, hey, you have our, our seeds. Um, it, it's not just to, in, you know, protect their intellectual property. And I'm saying that with a giant. <laughs> you know, finger right. quotes as big as I can, but it's also in part to drive them deliberately out of business or make them beholden right. to Monsanto. Right? It's a monopoly yeah. tactic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, they do it specifically yeah. to like the troublemakers. Right? Yeah, people who refuse to uh, engage with them or want to be independent farmers or whatever, like the country was originally founded on, and certainly in like the Midwest and shit. Okay, so. Getting to like the seed stuff. So now they are almost exclusively an agriculture company. They're really funny because in all of like their literature, they refer to the original Monsanto company and today's Monsanto, which is completely (laughs) different. (laughs) We are an agriculture company that is feeding the world. That That old Monsanto, that's the Monsanto that poisoned the streams. Right, this yeah. new Monsanto. Try, re- try refreshing new Monsanto. <laughs> there's no, there's no continuity between that old Monsanto and the current Monsanto. Like right. we have nothing to do with those guys. Like it's just a coincidence. What is the seed thing that you guys were just talking about? Explain that to me. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not familiar with that. Okay, so what they have done is they engineered seeds that are resistant to Roundup. So their entire business model now is Roundup Ready Seeds. So they developed Roundup, which is obviously a pesticide, which side note, um, I remember my dad grabbing like gallons of gallons of it and just drenching our yard in Roundup and like it stank and it like burned our faces and like, <laughs> right. like, just, like not really like, intended for residences. I don't know. Right? <laughs> So the whole thing is that they make Roundup, which is like this heavy herbicide, and then they make Roundup resistant seeds. So um, you sell the seeds and you can plant them very, very close together because you don't have to get at the weeds in between because you just drench the whole thing. So basically, once you have started using these seeds, you cannot go back. So yeah. they they plant these Roundup resistant seeds. They uh, um, it like jacks up your crop yields you know whatever now you can coat them in this pesticide and it won't kill your act or damage your actual product but it, it will kill all the weeds so you know whatever great they feel that this is a great invention 
I mean, in all fairness, it's one of the more brilliantly evil schemes I've ever heard in terms of, I mean, it, it it's incredible. And I mean, farmers, quote unquote, chose it because it's extremely effective. But yeah. once you're in, you cannot get out. Oh. So farming in the past, which for for like the record of the scale of this in Iowa, 80% of the crops are grown as Roundup Ready seeds or Roundup Ready. Eighty percent. Eighty percent. Wow. Yeah, I mean, just it's everyone because you just can't compete with people who are able to plant everything that close together. Yeah, higher yields. Yeah. Yeah, that you can like double, triple your yields if yeah, you yeah. plant them together because you don't have to get to the weeds because they used to have to be planted farther apart. Um, so the whole strategy was to get people completely dependent on them. And then just start fucking them. So unlike the past when you would be able to recollect your seeds and then seed next year with the same ones, um, you have to rebuy every single seed again next year. And you have to throw away all the old ones. So it's like super unsustainable. And it means you have to continue to buy with them every single year. Um, And the thing that they do is they are like fucking seed stalkers. Like, I, I mean, I have a, a thing and it's a little bit long, but it's worth it um, from an investigative reporter who said, as interviews and reams of court documents reveal, Monsanto relies on a shadowy army of private investigators and agents in the American heartland to strike fear into farm countries. They fan out into fields and farm towns where they secretly videotape and photograph farmers, store owners and co-ops. They infiltrate community meetings and gather information from informants about farming activities. Farmers say that Monsanto agents will prevent, pretend to be surveyors. Um, they confront farmers on their land and try to pressure them into signing papers, giving Monsanto access to their private records. The farmers call them the seed police, seed Gestapo, and seed mafia to describe their tactics. Um, and when they asked Monsanto about the pra- these practices, the quote the guy got was, quote, Monsanto spends more than $2 million a day to research, identify, test, and develop bring to the market innovative new seeds and technologies to benefit farmers. One tool in protecting this investment is patenting our discoveries and, if necessary, legally defending those patents against those who might choose to infringe upon them. So they don't even deny that they're doing this stalking and shit. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Are they, are they secretly planting these seeds on farmers' property or something? Yeah, so the thing is, is you're not allowed to reuse seeds. So they're uh, checking uh, the BC that you're doing new ones every year. Um, and then if there, when there are still local farms, which there's not a ton left, but they will um, go in and plant like empty paper bags where their seeds might have come from so that they can then go and say, look, they're using it. They actually do plant evidence? Yeah, yeah. And there's like article, record of there that? Was Holy someone, shit. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they created a, a 1-800 number and encouraged farmers to narc on other farmers my words <laughs> that they think may be engaging in seed piracy and then they have sued co-ops that provide seed cleaning because if they are cleaning a single monsanto seed it is like violating their intellectual property so i mean they stopped oh yeah yeah you're not allowed to clean and return a monsanto seed but you also can't look at them <laughs> <laughs> to provide a fair and balanced uh perspective of this uh per monsanto.com uh <laughs> in uh a like press release they did after the documentary food inc mm-hmm. they have a little q a why does monsanto sue farmers when monsanto <laughs> seeds blow into their fields <laughs> We don't sue farmers who have accidentally ended up with trace amounts of our seeds in their fields, and we've made a commitment that we never will. You can check out this NPR article for more information about how this idea might have gotten started. To briefly summarize the NPR article, this happened. Exactly. (laughs) I don't know why they... (laughs) A man had a farm next to somebody who he knew had... The the neighbor had Roundup Ready seeds. This man did not. He had a patch of crops that was very close to their, you know, border there. Uh, yeah. And so he, just as an experiment, sprayed some Roundup on a chunk of them. And they lived. And he figured, whoopsie daisy, I guess I have Roundup Ready seeds now. And said, seed police found this and brought legal action against him. How would they, how would they find it on his property? They stalk them. Uh, yeah. They have investigators that follow them around and take pictures. 
That's and incredible. They pretend, they pretend to be land surveyors. Yeah. Think about all the resources they'd have to put into that as well. Like sending people out right. to these big farm areas and like spying on people. Like that takes a lot of time. Imagine imagine working at that job. Like yeah. I, I'm a seed goon for Monsanto. <laughs> Bragging, bragging at the bar to all the women who are still around that I'm a seed goon for Monsanto. They prefer corn cop, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other, um, again, for balance, why does Monsanto require annual seed purchases for farmers when the t- typical practice was saving some from the previous crop and using them? Uh, when farmers choose to purchase the seeds we produce, they agree by contract not to save those seeds at the end of the season. We have these formal agreements because many of the seed varieties we develop are patented. So basically, we have this policy because we have this policy and we can't <laughs> right. do it. Because um, we can, yeah. Right. I mean, through the continuous innovative cycle fueled in part by patents, we're able to continue our work developing the next generation of products, blah, blah, blah. Additionally, buying new seeds every year often results in a much higher quality crop than replanting seeds from a previous year because of the way we produce and manage our seeds. So they build like women, uh, like planned obsolescence into the yeah. seeds. Yeah, they so, engineer their seeds to like work more poorly on the next generation. Right. Yeah. Well, and they're also always making new pesticides, and so then it would stop to work because you you also have to buy Roundup. Like. <laughs> right. They they have both sides of the thing, the deal. Right. Yeah. Right. They set the prices and they run, and the vast majority of now. It, and like they're now, they use Africa as like a, a test site for all of this stuff. Oh, why not? What? Yeah, I mean, like everything. Um, which comes to the Bill and Melinda <laughs> Gates Foundation. Evil on every level. Sure, why not? Yeah. <laughs> so the the way Check that the they box. <laughs> the way that they test this stuff is they basically pretend that they are using GMOs to bring to Africa. So the reason that you do Africa is one because no one will give a fuck. And two, because all this stuff is illegal in Asia and Europe, <laughs> but not in the U.S. Right. Um, but they will like test these in Africa and, you know, get people dependent on them there, too. The thing that's really bad about it is like, you know, Bill Gates pet project is like that. He's going to help alleviate hunger in Africa or whatever by developing these like high nutrient seeds. But what they just found out happened in the most recent, like, in the Gates Foundation is that he bought a fuckload of stock in Monsanto and then used the foundation to fund going and... (laughs) 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 So he bought 500,000 shares in Monsanto and then announced that the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation was going to fund poverty alleviating measures in uh, Africa by testing out all these new seeds that would help provide more nutrient dense foods for the people of Africa. And so it was all nonprofit. They got to do all of this tax free. Ah, great. <laughs> <laughs> just like unfucking believable. The other, like, so this is just a, a tiny turn, but the, like, it was just so wild to me that, like, so the other thing they do are is bovine growth hormone. So like where you inject the cows with the stuff to make them produce much more milk. Oh, me and Chris are very familiar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means, but it made me laugh. I'm not sure what that, not sure what that means <laughs> Oh, you know. You know. I like it. <laughs> so um, there is like a an organic farmer i don't remember where it said it was but he was producing milk the traditional way and he put on the box um does not use any bovine milk hormone whatever bst doesn't use it and monsanto sued him because somehow that implied that the um the bovine stimulating hormone is bad and so it mm-hmm. was targeting them specifically by saying that even though all he did was right on there doesn't contain this and they they <laughs> sued him for writing that on their package hey this is uh mr peanut from planters and we're going to be suing everyone who has <laughs> may contain peanuts on their package. <laughs> <laughs> this is defaming our brand <laughs> they made themselves a good old-fashioned political action <laughs> 
Committee, um, the American Farmers for Advancement and Conservation of Technology. Um, and it says that they are a producer organization attempting to fight back against questionable labeling tactics and activism <laughs> by markets that are encouraging consumers to shy away from foods that use new technology. <laughs> Like, imagine uh, just factually writing on the box of your milk, this does not contain X chemical. Mm -hmm. And then the person suing you for saying, like, how dare you suggest that something shouldn't contain it? Right. Yeah. Like, it's, it's you're basically just saying, like, this is different from my competitors, which is just all marketing is, like, across the board. This product is better than the other yeah, products. I mean, if, yeah, if I'm, if I'm hearing this correctly, you're not even they're not even implying that it's, that no. it's they didn't even or say that, that Monsanto is bad. Yeah. 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 Well, and what else what else would make milk organic? Maybe I'm being dumb here, but uh, other than the absence of something like that. Right. It's just organic milk, but if you point out the right. thing that makes it organic, then people might think about Monsanto. Um, oh, and an article about the Gates Foundation that I, I saved because um, I thought the screenshot was really funny. It said the two incidents raise a host of questions for the foundation, which is the stock, buying up a stock. Few people doubt that GM has a place in Africa. But is Gates being hopelessly naive by backing two of the world's most aggressive agri-giants? How would that be naive? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Basically naive Bill Gates. <laughs> bad at business and shady business tactics. Monopolies. Always taking bad risks, that Bill Gates. <laughs> <laughs> Just hate to see it happen to the boy. He bought up all that stock. Um, that's unrelated. Um, he is simply naive in believing that they have goodness at heart. Isn't that shit wild? Absurd, just just so absurd. I'm interested in looking more into the seed goons. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that whole that whole concept is is fascinating. I, they, I, I want to, I want to imagine them as being like fucking like like New, I mean, for some reason to me they're like New York like mafia goons. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> well, because the the farmers call said they called them the seed mafia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. I I thought of. Uh, uh, grain goons and soy spies because I really like alliteration. <laughs> so oh, that's there's good. two more alternatives. <laughs> yeah, okay. I thought we were running out of gritty mafia movies, but maybe we need a. <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna say I can imagine like a like an HBO or Showtime show <laughs> about a couple of seed goons, but it's like it's like the Wild West, you know, and they they they're like you know they're packing heat as they go from farm to farm, <laughs> <They're probably laughs> taking down one scene at a time. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure they're armed. Yeah. Are. yeah. There's a rookie upstart who's a little too, too hot tempered and he blows the head <laughs> off a scarecrow. <laughs> <laughs> and there's like a there's an old wizened seed goon who's got like a craggy <laughs> face, played by Tommy Lee Jones or something. There it is. There it is. I, I was thinking maybe Josh Brolin, but no, I think you got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, you gotta save Josh. Josh Brolin, you gotta save for um, uh, Monthanos, huh? Uh, uh, see, he they make each one of the seeds. There's a soul seed. There's a power <laughs> yeah. seed. There's a reality seed. And when he puts them all in the seed gauntlet, he snaps his fingers, and boom, baby, you got breakfast. <laughs> I appreciate you doubling down on that and turning it into gold. <laughs> So yeah, just to I mean, not to sound uh, or bring flashbacks of your uh, your hitchhiking trip here, but while I was trying to look up, oh, it was it was a wonderful time. <laughs> I want to I want to return to what was he saying about Monsanto? <laughs> oh God, I don't remember. I mean, you know, it's it, it, eventually I tuned it out. Yeah, you know, it was about like the GMO. You know, he talked a lot about the GMO. This was uh, I, I, how long have they been doing the seed thing? Because this was. Um, this would have been five or six years ago now. I know that I was hearing about Monsanto as kind of a boogeyman in like the late 2000s, at least like yeah, yeah. 12, 13 yeah. years the seed, ago. The, the seed thing, they've definitely been on for at least like 20 years. Yeah. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Yeah. You know how like Pizzagate was right, but they just had the details wrong? That's what I'm imagining. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> is all real. <laughs> it's like well but it was an island called little st james but you're you're on the right path pizzagate people <laughs> that's right. how i'm imagining this meth trucker being like <laughs> yeah no i think he was right about a lot of stuff um yeah he wasn't i mean he was really... 
he was a little, he was a little nutty, but he wasn't like a full on uh, conspiracy theory. No, he was into like he was going on and on and on about GMOs, and he was like. He was. This is kind of funny. He was a vegan. He was like really and like. It's funny. He was like really obsessed with his health, but he was like obviously, you know, <laughs> like up for six days on meth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. At the at the end of the trip, when he got out, there was a huge crowd of people, and they all applauded at the end of his thing. <laughs> <laughs> that meth yeah. driver's name was Albert Einstein. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Uh, it was Carl, actually. Yeah. Well. Carl well, Sagan. <laughs> Hey. Carl, Carl, if you're listening, uh, please, please come on both of our respective shows. <laughs> um, just this is just a, a thing that I needed to share. Um, I was trying to find anything about Cargill, um, and the I went to Internet Archive just to see if there were books or documents or anything. And just looking up Cargill got me into the found nothing about Cargill, but found Jodie Foster observations, flat Earth <laughs> electromagnet. Uh, Scientology <laughs> Satanism, and oh, then just yeah. this huge of tags of Lucifer's Lodge, Russian mind control, silent weapons for quiet wars, Iron Mountain, <laughs> unauthorized Bush, Kabbalah, Nikola, Nikola Tesla, Gordon Brown, Tony Blair, CIA, just on and on. Uh, Kabbalah spelled a different way. Aleister Crowley <laughs> spelled three different ways because nobody can spell <laughs> Aleister Crowley. Just MK Ultra, MK Naomi, huh? That one I don't know. <laughs> all, all of that sounds ex- extremely my shit. <laughs> I, 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 well, it's all connected. Just, internetarchive.org, type in Cargill, and you are down the rabbit hole, my friend. <laughs> Related subjects. <laughs> if you want to hear about Jodie Foster conspiracy theories, look up Cargill. I didn't want to open it because I think it's literally the, well, it's the manifesto, I think, from, uh, uh, what's his face? The, the Reagan guy. Um... Hinkley, yeah. John Hinkley Jr. Hinkley. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But try yeah, to find stuff on Cargill. Yeah. Apparently, the guy who couldn't finish the job. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Give, him, Give him another shot. Give him another shot. <laughs> <laughs> well, they did release him like a, a year or two ago. He's still alive. He's still alive. Yeah, he's yeah. Out of prison, yeah. pretty sure. <laughs> he's yeah. he's got another one in him. He's got yeah. another one in yeah. him. You pull it, he tried to get out and they pulled him. <laughs> we'll pull him right back in. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's a seed goon now, working working the hard beat in Iowa. He's got to take, take him to the shooting range a little bit. Let him you know work on his grouping. <laughs> if Jodie Foster. I assume she's like a resistance type figure. I mean, if she really cared about this country, she could make one phone call. <laughs> That's so true. In a movie, <laughs> not in real life. In a, in a parody. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that exhausts my. You had a lot of a lot of knowledge to lay on us. It's just fucking crazy to me. It's like every time you pull a string on literally any industry. Like, I taught sex ed, and if you pull a string on the sex ed curriculum industry, it brings yeah. you to the DeVos family. Like, how is oh this? <laughs> like, how is this fucking... If you unravel any part of American media and elites and whatever, it always brings you... Which, I mean, is the premise of your show. I don't have to tell you that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a foundation of evil everywhere. I, is well, that the show? Are we... I was going to say, the <laughs> people everywhere feels like a very good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so I, I think that's uh, the show for, for this time. Uh, thank you to Chris and Shane for joining us for this uh, deep dive on big agriculture. Thanks so much for having us. It was it was a real blast. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I had a good time, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, Thank I'd be happy so to uh, so happy excited. to talk to you guys again anytime. Uh, listeners, check out Eat the Rich podcast. As we mentioned at, at the top, they also have a Patreon with additional content available. Um, and Natalie also mentioned our Patreon, so I'll plug that one more time. <laughs> Patreon.com slash rockhardcaucus. I'm about halfway done reading a book called Willie Wilden, and I've been doing review episodes one-on-one with each member of the rock hard caucus family and i think you would probably enjoy it so check us out on patreon if you want to uh spend money to hear more of this um and they are at eat the rich pod and then i would strongly suggest that you follow chris on twitter <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, would, I would suggest that they follow shane well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't suggest Shane. that. I, I don't mean that. at the expense of Shane. I just mean 
Definitely, we can all agree, don't follow Dwight. <laughs> <laughs> I did feel kind of bad about that. I was like, wait. Who is, who is not here because he's dead to it. <laughs> and as always, if you have any corrections, problems, or issues with either what I said or what Chris said, please direct them to Dwight. You can find his <laughs> DMs or, yeah. or, or his personal email. Uh, no. <laughs> send him a letter. <laughs> Please send me hate mail at rockhardcaucus at gmail.com. Also, send that to Dwight. <laughs> <laughs> just, just CC him on the hate mail. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think that'll do it. Thanks, everybody. This has been Rock Hard Caucus. Good night. Check him out. What a hug. Get a load of him. Well, there's a super party and a party animal. His name is Buzz McKenzie. <laughs> Happening to-